So welcome back everybody. This is our last talk of the day, Open Source Game Achievements with Dennis Payne. And it's a pleasure to introduce himself. Dennis is a free software game developer in his spare time. He has a start BT Builder and Troll Bridge and maintains several other games he has stumbled across. Open Game Source is a series of articles about his game development efforts. Also, he mostly uses Fedora. He has been using Debian to run Hopzilla and his Gamezilla plugin. Please enjoy his talk. Okay, so welcome to Open Source Game Achievements. Um, normally for this uh, versions of this talk, I've gone into how achievements have come about, but I'm going to go on the assumption that as a game-specific talk uh, or conference, most of you know what achievements are or trophies under uh, the PlayStation. Uh, they are available on all the major platforms, uh, PlayStation, Xbox, Steam, GOG, and uh, Epic has them as well. Um, as a longtime PlayStation user, I tend to use Trophy, but I, I have been trying to switch to achievements because that's what uh, computer users are more familiar with due to Steam. Now, the problem with achievements is that free and open source software have been left out. Uh, we have no central server for the platform. So where Sony goes over and runs the achievements for the PlayStation, uh, there, there isn't something equivalent under Linux. And I don't think Red Hat wants to start running their own uh, achievement servers and Debian running their own. So th there is no central platform for setting up achievements. Uh, Additionally, we have the problem of when you go over and create a open source game, you just create it and release it out there. Uh, there's no registering with any service. And so you don't have the opportunity to set up all the achievements like you do under Steam. Uh, there, there is another wrinkle that uh, free software and open source games have. And that is that free software and open source uh, users tend to be more privacy oriented. So they don't necessarily want to have all of their information uploaded to some corporate uh, site where they get to retain all of that. Um, I, I don't know that there's anything they can really do with that information. Uh, but it, it is something that people probably don't like. But we've already solved this problem for social networks. Uh, we created the Fediverse, uh, a whole bunch of different social network software that can all uh, talk to each other. So if I'm running on a Hubzilla server and someone else is running on Mastodon, it doesn't matter. We can still exchange communications. So what ended up happening is free game dev set up a Hubzilla server. And so I joined that for the first time I've had a social network account. And I started looking over Hubzilla and looking at the add-on system they had, I figured you could create something like these achievement systems. So you could go over and have the games upload their stats to Hubzilla and display them on Hubzilla. And so that's what Gamerzilla is that I've been working on. Uh, these are some screenshots from it, uh, the, the website of it. So these are a list of the games that I have uh, achievements for, and then a screenshot of uh, one of the achievements for one of the games I have. Now, why do you want something like this? 
gamers expect it at this point. Uh, people uh, like these achievements, not everyone, but it gives you something to do in those situations where it's more of an open world and some people like the aspect of going over and trying to get all the achievements. Uh, the other thing about it is that it gives you visibility into what your friends are playing. Think of it kind of like a virtual bookshelf of your video games. So right now, uh, most video games are delivered digitally. So it's not like you can go over to someone's house and see, oh, these are the games they've been playing. So the uh, achievements kind of serve that role as a digital version. So how does it work? Uh, there are two big pieces to uh, Gamerzilla. There is the Gamerzilla add-on to Hubzilla, and there is libgamerzilla. Now, you can write a game that uses libgamerzilla and talk directly to uh, the Hubzilla instance and update all your stats and everything. Uh, but what that means is you would have to enter in your login information to every single game. They would have to have a configuration screen and you would have to be able to enter in how to get to your Hubzilla instance. So what I've designed the system for is to have a game launcher in the middle, uh, kind of like the way this, what the Steam client does. So all the games would use libgamerzilla to talk to the game launcher. And the game launcher would be the one that actually goes over and uh, has all the information for login and actually does the uh, communication with Hubzilla. Now, everything is designed to ca be cached in sync automatically. So if you go over and launch your game without the launcher, and then later on you uh, start up the game launcher, it will automatically be able to sync that information back to Hubzilla. Um, for the Linux users, this is done, the communication between game, the games and the game launcher are done using an anonymous uh, Unix socket. Now, I've gone over and done, converted several different games to use uh, Gamerzilla achievements. Uh, and in my time of doing these conversions, uh, I, I've found what I believe to be the best practice, and you could see that in Super Tux Cart and Me and My Shadow. Uh, both of those games had achievements before I even touched them. Uh, they were just local achievements. They didn't upload to any service. And so what they end up doing is they collect statistics. Uh, after all the statistics are collected, they see what achievements have been earned and uh, awards them. So this allows you to have all of the achievement code in one central place instead of having it sprinkled throughout your code. Uh, the small trek game, I followed that design as well when I added in achievements to that. So for a game in C, you would do something similar to this. Uh, you would call Gamerzilla Start. Uh, the false tells you that you are actually a game and not a game launcher. Then you need to say where you want to store cache the information about what achievements you've earned. Uh, you set up the achievements using the Gamerzilla set game from file. Uh, that is a, just a simple JSON file. Now in this case, uh, the second argument there is just Gamerzilla slash. Uh, that implies that this game is designed to be run from the directory that 
it's in. So not something I generally look for for games. I, I like to have uh, my games designed with more of a Unix mentality where they could be installed on in a user bin or, or uh, and have all the game files in user, sh uh, user share. Uh, I also should mention that I, I've put in this example that it's going to tilde dot local slash share slash test. Uh, that's actually not what you should be doing because of the free desktop standard has uh, has some variables you should be looking for or some uh, environment variables you should be looking for. But as a simple example, I figured this would work. Uh, at the end of the game, you would call Gamerzilla quit. And then you would have this game loop. Uh, in the game loop, you would have at some point that you would collect the game stats and call this update trophies function. And it would go over and compare various stats and update uh, whatever trophies you would have earned. Now, I, I say game stats. Um, these are not necessarily global uh, all-time stats. So in the case of Super Tux, they have stats that are reset every race, I believe. So you, you can go over and find out information about just the last race, not just all the races. Now, if you want to add support to a game launcher, Gamerzilla start is the same sort of thing, except the uh, first argument is true. And then you need to call Gamerzilla connect to connect to your Hubzilla instance. Uh, you need to have a thread that's periodically calling Gamerzilla server process. Uh, there, there's also a callback that you can get the short name and the full name of a game. And so what you can do with that is uh, you can go over and launch a game and then the callback will be called and you'll be able to see, oh, this game is using Gamerzilla. Let me associate that in our launcher without having to actually uh, enter that information directly into the game launcher. And you can uh, use the short name to get information about what achievements have been awarded to, to display that in the game launcher. All right, for the current state, uh, one of the things I specifically tried to do was to get a rather random collection of games that use all sorts of different uh, technology to uh, different compilers to make sure that Gamerzilla can support any of them. So you've got Super Tux Cart and Me and My Shadow using C++, Shippy1984 using C. Uh, Small Trek uh, uses a language called NIM that I hadn't even heard of until I, I uh, was on uh, the Game Dev IRC forum at one point. Uh, there's Seahorse Adventures in Python and uh, Pinball Disk Room in Godot. Uh, now, Small Trek and Me and My Shadow have not been merged. Uh, the small trek, I, I have put in a pull request, but I haven't heard anything from the developer, so it, it may not get merged. Uh, me and my shadow, the same thing. I, I haven't heard one way or the other. Uh, all the other ones have been merged in. Uh, Seahorse Adventures and Shippy 1984, I actually forked because they were unmaintained. Uh, for launchers, uh, the only launcher that I have support in so far is GameHub, and that one's technically not merged yet. 
Uh, that one's written in Vala, uh, another language I hadn't heard of until I looked at adding support for uh, into a game launcher. Um, so I, I'm hoping to get that merged at some point. The developer is willing to do that, but he's talking about uh, reworking how the achievement code is done to be more generic. And I haven't gotten around to making it more generic myself to try to push it into a uh, game hub faster. Uh, for Super Tux Card, I ended up having to do the same thing. They they said, you know, it, it's great, but we, we'd like to be able to support other achievement systems in the future. Now, I will say that if you're a game developer, uh, the nice thing about uh, game, one of the nice things about uh, Gamerzilla is that it is independent of the various stores. So right now, you would have to go over and make a separate build for Steam, a separate build for GOG, a separate build for Epic, if you wanted to be able to support all of their achievement systems. So this one is designed to be uh, used on any of them so that if at some point itch.io decides you know we'd like to have achievements they could go over and say you know what lib gamers uh, gamerzilla already does what we needed to do we could just add in support for that at least that's my hope all right for what still needs to be done um Right now, I mentioned that Linux uses a Unix domain socket. Uh, Wine does not. It, it uses a regular network socket. Uh, that's because the cross compiler under Fedora does not support uh, the Unix domain sockets, which I've heard that Windows now does support. Uh, so that that's one of those things if I'd like to have the ability to turn on a wine mode so that if you're running some game launcher and you know this game uses wine, you can go over and just turn on that mode and it will automatically set up the socket and listen on there. Um, the Godot GD native implementation that I made for uh, the pinball disk room is only available under Linux at the moment because I just haven't uh, gotten around to building it for Windows. Uh, for the Godot, for Godot, it uses uh, Microsoft Visual Studio for compiling the Windows version. So I, I haven't been able to uh, compile uh, GameZilla for that yet. I think it should compile very easily. I just haven't had a chance to do that. I would love for there to be more game launchers support. So in particular, Lutris, uh, but I, I'm not particular about what game launchers are supported. I, I would love any of them. Um, I intend to try to get more support into game engines as well. So uh, Bevy and Love are two of the ones that I've looked at, but haven't gotten around to do more yet. Uh, obviously, more game support would be great. Uh, more distribution support. Uh, right now, it's available under Fedora uh, because I maintain it there. Uh, the, it also includes cross-compiler support under Fedora because I want to be able to make Windows builds and I don't want to actually use a Windows machine. Obviously, Debian is one that I would like to see uh, support added to. There are other things that would be nice for features. Um, the, the, the PlayStation Store has the ability to compare achievements with a friend. So you can go over and see which uh, achievements a friend has that you don't. Um, the other thing that it currently does not do right now is multi-language support. Uh, the, I, I haven't gotten around to looking into Hubzilla to see 
if it's possible to add in some support for this or not. Um, the so that that's just kind of sitting out there. Uh, frankly, I haven't been overly impressed with Hubzilla after doing the development with it. So I, I'm not opposed to there being a standalone server as well. But right now I've been focused on the Hubzilla implementation. Uh, the social.freegamedev.net is, as far as I know, the only uh, Hubzilla instance that has support for Gamerzilla so far. Um, obviously, without game launcher support, it's not necessarily that useful to most people, but I figured I'd put it out there. Uh, ideally, I'd like to get more Hubzilla instances supporting it, but I, I haven't looked into that yet. And so that's uh, pretty much it. Uh, here is my website for uh, Gamerzilla. Uh, I am often on the, I, I frequent the free game devs forum. Uh, my email address and my social network. Thanks a lot, Dennis. So let's share the, the, the question we have. Um, if you need a different socket type of wine, why not just open it always? And why would not use non-Unix sockets for native games? Is there a benefit to a Unix domain socket? Uh, the, the reason I went with Unix domain sockets is because I feel that that's the right solution. It, it doesn't have the ability to uh, accidentally leak out information. So we've had problems in the past where people have been able to use, compromise the web browser to be able to use, make a local uh, network socket connection. And so I think Unix domain sockets are a little more secure in that respect. Okay, um, another question I have seen. Federal Linux has an award achievement trophy system for its contributors, Federal Badgers. Do you think something like game, game Ursula will also be used for non-games like this, where people want to use gamification like this? Um, I, I don't know. I, I, I know of the Fedora badges, and uh, I, I, the, the way the Fedora badges are set up, there isn't any grouping. So you just get badges uh, for working on Fedora. Uh, whereas this, you'd want to be able to group them by games. So it's quite possible that you would end up in this situation where you say, hey, let's go over and use Gamerzilla to support that. Uh, but I haven't looked into that. I, I've been focused on supporting it for uh, games. Now, I, I actually work for a learning company and there is a open badge standard for uh, learning uh, systems as well. And so I debated looking into something like that, but for, for now I've just focused on getting a minimal implementation up and running for games. Great, thanks a lot for your talk, Dennis.